The way that blood moves inside the circulatory system of a developing fetus is quite different than the way that blood moves inside the fully functional adult individual. And in this lecture, we're going to focus on the former. We're going to discuss the way that blood moves inside the developing circulatory system of the fetus. So let's begin inside the placenta. Inside the placenta, we have an exchange taking place. Oxygen and nutrients are picked up by the blood of that fetus, while carbon dioxide and other waste products are deposited into the blood of that mother. And once this exchange takes place inside the placenta, a special type of blood vessel carries the oxygenated and nutrient-filled blood away from the placenta and towards the heart of that developing fetus. And this blood vessel is known as the umbilical vein. So just like any vein always carries blood to the heart, the umbilical vein always carries blood to that heart. Now, as the umbilical vein shown in red actually carries the oxygenated and nutrient-filled blood to the heart, eventually it comes in close proximity with the liver. And there is a tiny blood vessel that goes into that liver. Now, the problem with the liver in the fetus is the liver is underdeveloped. It is not fully functional. And what that means is we should not waste that oxygen and nutrients onto the liver because the liver doesn't yet function the same way it does in the adult individual. And so what the fetal circulatory system does is it conserves some of that oxygen and the nutrients inside the blood by shunting or redirecting that blood away away from that liver and directly into the inferior vena cava. And this takes place as a result of the presence of a special type of duct within the circulatory system of that fetus known as the ductus venosus. So the ductus venosus is a, small, is, is a small type of blood vessel that creates a passageway that allows the oxygenated and nutrient-filled blood to bypass the liver and go directly into the inferior vena cava. So this is the inferior vena cava. And notice the inferior vena cava carries the deoxygenated blood from the organs and tissues found at the bottom of that developing fetus. And when we have this intersection taking place, we have the mixing of the oxygenated and nutrient-filled blood with the deoxygenated blood, and so we form a partially oxygenated blood. And that's why we use a light purple color for the partially oxygenated blood. So this is essentially the inferior vena cava that eventually connects with the superior vena cava. And when this connection takes place, we have a further mixing of the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood to form an even less partially oxygenated blood, and all that blood eventually reaches the right atrium of the heart. So once again, oxygenated blood from the placenta is carried via the umbilical vein, this entire structure here. And notice we call it a vein and not an, and not an artery because a vein by definition always carries blood towards the heart while the artery always carries blood away from the heart. Now, as it travels past the underdeveloped liver of the fetus, the blood bypasses the liver via blood duct called the ductus venosus as shown in this diagram and as shown in this diagram here. So this structure here is our ductus venosus. It connects the umbilical vein to that inferior vena cava and allows the blood to bypass the liver. So the ductus venosus uh, that should be venosus. The ductus venosus connects with the inferior vena cava, which mixes the oxygenated and the deoxygenated blood. And the mixed blood, the partially oxygenated blood, is shown in light purple and eventually travels to the right atrium of the heart. So this should be ductus venosus. Okay, now let's move on to the right atrium of the heart and let's see what takes place within our right atrium. Now, before we move on to the right atrium, let's focus on the lungs. So what happens in the lungs of the fetus? 
So just like the liver is not yet fully functional, the lungs inside the fetus are also not functional. And that's because the alveoli of the lungs are completely filled with fluid. And what that means is there is no oxygen exchange actually taking place within the lungs. Remember, all the oxygen and carbon dioxide is exchanged inside the placenta of that developing fetus. So because the lungs are filled with fluid, Fluid, what that means is there is a high resistance inside that fluid, inside the lungs, and that creates a high pressure. Now, we know that blood, as any other fluid, will always flow from a high pressure to a low pressure. So because the lungs have a high pressure, that creates a high pressure in the pulmonary trunk, and it also creates a high pressure in the right ventricle and the right atrium. Now, because of the high pressure in the lungs, the blood inside the right atrium does not actually want to flow into those lungs. And so what happens is, once again, we have redirection and shunting taking place. But this time, instead of using this passageway called the ductus venosus, we use another passageway known as the foramen ovale. And what the foramen ovale is, it's a small door it's a small hole that exists inside the wall between the right atrium and the left atrium. So the right atrium has its own wall and the left atrium also has its own wall. And there are two tiny holes, one in the right atrium and one in the left atrium, and that creates this door-like structure that essentially opens one way and it opens from the right atrium to the left atrium, and that's because inside the right atrium, we have a higher pressure than inside the left atrium. And so because there's a higher pressure inside the right atrium than inside the left atrium, blood will naturally and spontaneously move from the right atrium into the left atrium. And this is the shunting of blood that takes place between the two atria of the fetal heart. Now, a small portion of the blood will still leak into the right ventricle and then will pass into the pulmonary trunk. So this is the pulmonary trunk that connects to the right and the left pulmonary arteries. Now, those pulmonary arteries, or, or um, at the pulmonary trunk, we have yet another connection between the pulmonary trunk and our aorta. So, this is our aorta, and between the aorta and the pulmonary trunk, we have another type of passageway that allows the redirecting and the rerouting of that blood, but this time from the pulmonary trunk and directly into our aorta. So, we have these, t these three different shunting processes that take place within the circulatory system of the fetus. One takes place between the umbilical vein and the inferior vena cava. The second one takes place between the right atrium and the left atrium. And the third one takes place between the pulmonary trunk and between our aorta. So once again, if we examine this diagram here, the deoxygenated blood coming from the superior vena cava is further mixed with the oxygenated blood that is coming from the inferior vena cava. So we have these two different types of bloods take, uh, coming in and they mix and they enter the right atrium. Now, once they enter the right atrium, there is a high pressure inside the right atrium as a result of the high pressure inside the lungs. So, since the fetal lungs are filled with fluid, they contain a high resistance to flow and that creates a high pressure. And as a result, the blood is rerouted and moves to the lower pressure left atrium via the foramen ovale. So, there is this tiny one-way door that opens as a result of that push, as a result of that difference in pressure. And so as the blood moves from the high pressure into the low pressure, this foramen ovale opens up and the blood travels into the left atrium. And from the left atrium, it passes into the left ventricle and then it moves into our aorta. Now, of course, a small portion of that blood will leak 
from the right atrium and into the right ventricle and then will pass into the pulmonary trunk. Now in the pulmonary trunk, remember we don't want to waste any of that oxygen and nutrients on the lungs because the lungs inside that fetal individual are not yet developed and so that means they cannot exchange any of that oxygen for carbon dioxide. And so we need another duct and this duct is called the ductus arteriosus. So the ductus arteriosus connects the pulmonary trunk directly to our aorta. And so as that blood fills the pulmonary trunk, some of it actually leaves or most of it leaves this section, the pulmonary artery, and enters our aorta. Now, of course, a small amount of that oxygenated and nutrient-filled blood will actually leave and enter the left and right pulmonary artery. And so they will carry the oxygen to the lungs, and that's okay because the lungs do need a small amount of oxygen to actually develop further. So once our partially oxygenated blood travels into our aorta, what happens is it begins to move into the tissues and organs found in the upper portion of that fetus and the lower portion of that fetus. Eventually, that deoxygenated blood will enter these internal iliac arteries and they will connect with these umbilical arteries and that will carry the deoxygenated blood back into the placenta. And once again, inside the placenta, we have the oxygenation of that blood and the nutrients flow into that blood once again. And so the the fetal blood now contains the oxygen and nutrients and the cycle can basically start over again. So this is the way that blood circulates inside that developing fetus be before the birth of that fetus. So we have three important shunting processes taking place and the reason we need the shunting processes is because the liver and the lungs are not functional in that developing fetus. So to redirect the blood and conserve that oxygen nutrients, we have the ductus venus that redirects the blood and bypasses the liver and the blood enters the inferior vena cava. Now, between the right atrium and the left atrium, we have this small door-like structure known as the foramen ovale. And what that allows us to do is it allows us to basically shunt and bypass the lungs. And so the blood flows from a high pressure, the right atrium to the low pressure, the left atrium, and the high pressure is created as a result of the high resistance and high pressure inside the fluid-filled lungs. And finally, because a tiny portion of that oxygenated blood will enter the right, atria, the right ventricle and eventually into the pulmonary uh, trunk, what happens is we have yet another passageway that allows the bypassing of those lungs and this passageway is known as the ductus arteriosus. It allows us to actually bypass the lungs by connecting the pulmonary trunk directly to the order of that developing circulatory system.